We have here before your very eyes the new follies! Huzzah! In spite. Thank you. That's what I was going to say. We needed a barker. Thank you. We have been inspired by Mr. Will Catlin. As are you. And his troop and some of his family are here today Huzzah! to see us perform. As are you. We've had the jollies perform for us, and now the follies are going to perform for you. The seaside has had many types of entertainment, and pierrots are one of them. They are brought to the UK around the end of the 1890s by a man called Clifford Essex, and it was a type of entertainment which was widely popular and lasted for many years, and it is said to have had around 2,000 troops at some point. They can still be found today, but there is only one troop left, and I am trying to find out about their experiences and their story, and what is the future holding for the last Piero troop of Britain. It's a combination of things, really. I mean, on one hand, it's another job in a line of jobs in show business. I mean, I've been an actress for 41 years, so I've done serious acting, comedy acting, musicals, pantomimes. Uh, I've been a magician's assistant. So in one way, this is just another job. But I have worked with Tony, Uncle Taco, on a lot of pantomimes and concert party things, so I like working with him. And on the other hand... My mother was, her name, her name in the business was Zampinella, the voice phenomenal. She had a four octave singing voice. And during her career, she also appeared at one time in a Piero troupe as a Pierrette. So for me, I love the Pieros anyway. It is another job, but also I feel like I'm paying homage to my mother, which is why I'm using her name too. Well, what led me to be a Piero is that one day I got back to my flat in Brighton in 1983, I believe, and I discovered a note scrawled by four boys saying, would you like to be in our Piero troop? And they deliberately misspelt it. And they said, if you would like to be in our Piero troop, come and meet at, and I forget the exact number, but it was in Regency Square, Brighton, which was where Tony Liddington, uh, later to be Uncle Taco, lived. Uh, it was signed by four people, including Tony, a chap called Dave, and a chap called Simon, and another chap. And they basically invited me to come and join their Piero troop. I went round there for a meeting. We talked about what it was going to be and how the troop might work. And I decided if I wanted to do it, and I thought it seemed like a good idea after I sung with them. And here I am, 25 years or more later. I was asked to be part of this project, but before I was invited to be part of this group, this troupe, um, about eight years ago, just after I'd graduated from university, uh, Uncle Taco asked me to be part of a group called the Peer Echoes, and that was the first time that I'd um, had a taste of what Piero troops were about, and he's invited me back to do this one. Um, and I'm really excited. So I did a course with Tony in May, which was an outdoor physical theatre clowning Piero course. And then he invited me to audition for this troupe. And I auditioned and I got a place in the Piero troupe. Uncle Taco is what I'm known as uh, as a Piero. And I became interested in the Piero's uh, right back in the 1980s when I was an undergraduate. About 1982, I read a book all about Piero troops, but it was the only one I could find. And so rather than try and dig around in libraries and archives about it, I decided that I would uh, buy a banjo with my 21st birthday money, uh, get some of my mates to learn some songs. I bought 30 yards of bridal satin and some uh, black pom-pom material, and we dressed up as Piero's and we performed. And so we busked on the seafront in Brighton in 1983. Being a Piero is an awful lot of fun. It gives you license, freedom to uh, play. Um, to be anarchic on the streets. Uh, I was interested in the development of street theatre in Britain, um, which had lain dormant for quite some time. When I first started, it was still illegal to perform on the streets. as uh, it was, It's still classed as vagrancy, um, uh, begging. Um, and so I was part of the street arts movement that came in the 1980s and came out of uh, the punk movement and stuff like that. 
And I was keen to reclaim the streets, move away from what I saw as the uh, uh, bourgeois tyranny of the theatres and the box office, and to move onto the streets where you could say and do anything. And so the Piero costume and the Piero mode uh, gives you an opportunity to uh, play with people in public space. My favourite song at the moment that we perform uh, is a song entitled Tea Time Tomorrow. And the reason I like it is because it was the theme tune, or a theme tune, sung by Catlins. <laughs> I like all the songs we sing as a troupe, all of them. I like the songs that I harmonise on, like the ballad Deep Purple Dreams and Goodbye Dolly Gray. The song I sing myself, which is I want to sing in opera, is great for me because I get to show off all my range. I'm singing low, I'm singing very high, and I'm doing lots of trills and silliness, so that feels great. <laughs> Seaside Rendezvous we do as an a cappella piece and it was originally by Freddie Mercury. Meanwhile, I ask you to be my Valentine. You say you will if you could, but you can I love you madly. I think at the moment my favourite song is Deep Purple and it's a really romantic song um, that Mr Mako sings and it's a love song and I think it's it's just one of those really sweet moments and I think the, one of the most beautiful things that you can give to an audience is just like an absolute moment, unexpected moment of romance uh, and, and beauty. When the deep so far? It's been great. I mean, it's just what wonderful weather we've had and as it's gone on, we've just got more confident with it and played with it a bit more and had more fun with the audience and that's been great fun. How, what do you think of the new Foley's? Uh, beautiful costumes, great to see young people doing live street performance, street art. It's much harder uh, on the street to perform than it is to perform in a theatre, so it's great to see that people taking that brave step to try things out in the public space. It's that type of entertainment that people can join in, they can watch and it's sort of, and they keep up with the times by using modern uh, things that are going on. And that's what I enjoy, but I, I love the old songs as well, so I was singing very loudly. I mean, I would recommend it for anybody else to see it as well. As I said, it's quite it's traditional for British people to see it, so why not? I think it's a good idea. Tell me some ways that the Piero tradition can stay alive. How, how, how would it stay alive? Like, how do you pass it to more people? Mm. Mm. Well, we've got a young troupe called the Jollies performing with us, and they're all younger people. Mm. So they'll be coming out with us, and with any luck, they would also tell their friends. And there are other projects like this around the country. I've done five or six or seven different projects working with young people and community groups across the country. Um, my hope is that uh, seasides will recognise that free entertainment for families is what they need mm. to regenerate the seasides. They've, they've fallen on quite hard times for the last 50 years, and part of the reason for that, I would say, is because there isn't free family entertainment along the seafront. If they could see that and regard that as, as valuable as building a new uh, building or a new business or uh, supporting existing businesses, which are, is also important, but they also need to have something that attracts people here. Mm. And nonsense like this can. And it appeals not just to the kids, but also to their parents and their grandparents. Yeah. It looks at history and it looks in the present to the future. Although the future of Pierrots is something uncertain, there is hope. The new Follies have managed to incorporate modern methods into their craft, evolving to a new era, allowing people to connect and share this old tradition hoping for new troops to appear and the regeneration of British seaside. Hopefully, Pierrots will be around for the enjoyment of future generations, as this is a type of entertainment which many people are said to enjoy forever. <laughs>